Hello, this is Catherine at I Know I Need to Stop Talking. How are we all? Is everybody okay? It's the worst thing about podcasts is you don't know how people are. And I genuinely, I hope everybody's all right in these strange, strange times, whether you're in local lockdowns or not in local lockdowns or just going to Barnard Castle and following your instincts. I hope that everybody is, is doing okay and has had a good week. It has been a busy and a frenetic week in our lives, but then again, with two small children, 12,000 football matches, three mad cats, a full-time job and a partridge in a pear tree, when is it not a crazy week in our lives? Multiple highlights. My favourite highlight of this week has to be Beth walking in on, I think, Thursday morning. It was the aftermath of the presidential debate before the, the shocking news that President Trump has contracted coronavirus. I will refrain from making any comments whatsoever on what I think about that because this is not a political blog. However, if you would like to know my views, see me later. Anyway, I digress. Beth walked in in the aftermath of the presidential debate between Donald Trump and Joe Biden and watched them. It was on, I think, the BBC News. Watched them just being dicks and talking over each other and shouting and behaving like children. And she looked at them in a in the same kind of disdainful way that she occasionally looks at the boys in her class when they're being dicks. And she looked looked at them for a moment, she shook her head and she said, well, she said, if you talked like that in my class, you would get very badly told off. And I say, bravo, Beth, that is exactly what both of those two need. They need a good telling off and to be sent to their rooms for a little while to think about what they have done. I don't know about anybody else, but as we head into the start of October, we've obviously gone through what felt like the longest fucking school holiday ever. And then the excitement, hooray, the children are back at school. And I can say well and truly, oh my goodness, the novelty has definitely worn off. And Jamie would wholeheartedly agree. Jamie, who, let's all remember, lockdown for him when I was very concerned. And, you know, Jamie, are you all right? It's lockdown. How are you finding it, son? And he looked at me like I was an idiot and went, mum, it's the greatest time of my life. I don't have to go to school, I don't really have to do much work, and I can sit in my pants all day. And if sitting in your pants all day is your mark of success, then I guess lockdown was indeed fucking amazing. But no, definitely the the novelty of being back into the school run has, has worn off, and I definitely think like the kids both, I'm sure, made more of an effort in the first few days. Well, we are just back to the days of forgetting fucking everything. I... Every every school term, every term, I have this this vision of myself as this super organised parent with with lists and with a planner. You know those planners that you can get, which have um, columns, one for each family member, and on every day it says where you are and what you should have and what you should be doing. I am so the kind of person who needs one of those. And every time I see one, I say, yes, I must get one of those. And the fact that I still haven't got one of those perhaps tells you why I so desperately need something to remind me what the fuck I should be doing. But yeah, God, remembering things, remembering things, remembering things. And and I thought naively that because I am, as I have been since the start of the pandemic, because I'm working from home instead of going into the office, I naively thought to myself that this was going to be my opportunity to become this super organised parent. And I'm literally I'm laughing as I'm saying this because I'm sat at my dining room table, which was going to be the hub, the hub of organisation. It's fucking chaos. I mean, there is just, it, it, in, in my view, it's, it's like a, do you remember that game you sometimes played at parties? I think it was called Kim's Game, where there was the most random selection of shit on a tray. And then you had to remember everything that was on the tray. And then your parents would take the tray away and take some items off. And then you come back and have to try and guess what was missing. I now feel like maybe it was only me who played Kim's Game at parties, because it sounds quite an educational game, doesn't it? It sounds quite anti-fun, anti-fun games. Anyway, I digress. My 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 dining room table looks looks like the aftermath of some hellish hellish version of Kim's Gate. Just 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 some random items that I can see from here on the table. An empty tube of hand cream should have gone in the bin. I've told myself for the last three weeks to put that in the bin. Hasn't gone into the bin. A acu pressure hay fever band, which I raved about on the blog in the summer. Seriously, if you have hay fever, look those bad boys up. They're a game changer. There's a toilet roll. I don't know why. I don't think I want to know why. There's three large packets of marzipan. It's birthday week next week. We'll come on to that possibly in next week's blog post. And there are not one, but two. They're fly swats, but I think that probably if you saw them, you would judge me because Mr. I Know I Need to Stop Talking has a thing about wanting nice things for the house and things to look nice, which is really good and great. And these are so much nicer than those horrible, plastic, shitty, easily breakable fly swats. 
They are also made from wood with a leather paddle and I can only describe them as looking like some kind of S&M bondage accessory, which is defo not my bag, but I'm sure people are looking at and thinking, oh yeah. In fact, that's, I've just now had a sudden terrible thought, thought, my goodness, what does my cleaner think of me? So if my cleaner's listening to this, they are fly swats. They are absolutely fly, fly swats. I feel I've now protested too much. God, how, how did I go down this random, random train of thought? Anyway, so yeah, my, my dining room table is fucking chaos. So clearly is the inside of my mind. And so is our, is our morning routine. And, and I've done that thing of trying to get up earlier and thinking if I set my alarm earlier, maybe we will have an organised school run for once. Maybe we will all get our shit together and it will all go brilliantly and smoothly. All that happens, I've discovered, if I set my alarm earlier, is I just sit in my pants. Maybe Now I know where Jamie gets it from. I just sit in my pants and stare at my phone or even at the wall for a period of time until suddenly it's five minutes later than I would have been if I'd got up at the other time I'd set my alarm for. So... Yeah, I think we're I think we're destined to be a, a disorganised family in the morning. It's quite interesting as the kids have got older and I've started to notice that that, that age old refrain that all parents from probably when your kids are about from about the age of three to about the age of eleven, every morning, teeth, hair, shoes. I swear my neighbours probably thought that was the names of my children. I shouted it so often and at such a velocity. Teeth, hair, shoes. But, but teeth, hair, shoes has, has been replaced as the children have got a little bit older and certainly as Jamie has gone off to secondary school. I'd love to say it's got simpler. It really, really hasn't. And the pandemic has not helped this, not helped this. Because now my, my morning my, my morning diatribe, uh, we still start with teeth, teeth, dent- good dental hygiene, very important. Teeth, I've given up on hair. I've just fucking given up. Beth can just about do her own hair now. Jamie goes to school most days looking like he's been electrocuted. I just think, crack on, son, you're old enough. If that's, if that's the vibe you're going for, you go for it. So so we, we don't bother with hair. Shoes, I'd like to say I don't need to bother anymore with my children being nearly 10 and nearly 13. But as you saw from the story on the blog the other day, Jamie is still capable of going out and getting into the car wearing his only his socks. So we still have shoes. So we have teeth, shoes. And, and then we go into kind of the next level. So it's teeth, shoes, deodorant, fob, locker key, mask, again, pandemic not helping mask hand sanitizer and then of course the dreaded the fucking dreaded water bottle i swear when i die they will find me in the back seat of my car buried by what looks like a fucking art installation of fucking water bottles for a long time when the children were were, were younger we kind of had we had we had one or two water bottles probably for each of them and i naively thought that that would be sufficient oh oh god i look back and i laugh at the innocence of my of my new parent self one or two water bottles each having a fucking laugh my children probably have 20 each and ironically i do that because i thought well we must have good quality reusable water bottles very important for the environment don't want to use single plastic ones that would be a terrible terrible thing i mean i don't know why i fucking bothered because the amount of plastic i have since bought in water bottles i probably have done yeah i dread to think the 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 damage to the rainforests does plastic damage rainforests probably i should know this shouldn't i anyway um what whatever whatever i have definitely fucked the environment with the amount of fucking plastic bottles i have in the back of my car but they just they they just as i say if somebody walked past they'd probably think it was some kind of some kind of art installation I, I don't know if any of you who are parents have you ever occasionally give people a lift and perhaps perhaps you are much better people than me and your car is neat and tidy my car is so not neat and tidy because it's out of sight out of mind right when I'm driving I'm looking straight ahead I don't have to look to the side I don't have to look around me I can I can ignore it and then I'm in the house and it's kind of it's just not there but <laughs> if you if you like if you like me are perhaps um not not the tidiest car keeper and you occasionally give somebody a lift who's not a parent and, and I can still remember back to those pre-children days and, I, and I'm pretty sure that I would have got into the car of someone who's a parent with the same level of I wouldn't say judgment because that's unkind it's not judgment it's it's almost a look of a, a, a look of shock it's oh my goodness I didn't realize cars could be this messy and they kind of do that little polite smile and sit down being very very careful not to touch anything yeah that is um that is a, a good summing up of, of the back of my car and again I, I have all these great intentions every now and then I blitz it I go and clean it out or I even go so far as to take it to Tesco and ask a nice man to clean it out and pay him to clean my car out and I'm like right that's it kids it's a new start it's a new dawn it's a new revolution the car will be tidy forever it's like a new car and it lasts probably less than about 25 seconds before one of them has dropped something somewhere and I just think oh we may as well give up we may as well give up anyway so yes my um my water bottle shrine in the back of the car 
but remembering stuff that is that is definitely the worst thing about back to school lockdown was shit in so many different ways but the glorious thing was i didn't have to remember fucking anything and it was lovely and perhaps that's why i'm now so bad because those skills have gone out the window most of you will will have read the the debacle of my week starting on monday morning literally i'm i'm not very good at the morning in the mornings so i'll i'll wake up but i'm i'm not my i'm not my most alert first thing and i woke up to find jamie just standing casually at the end of end of my bed looking kind of a little bit i wouldn't say shamefaced because that would suggest that he thought it was wrong that he'd only just remembered that but just a little bit like oh, i probably just need to make you a mum he's like um oh, i think i might have food tech i'm like Okay, cool. When, when when have you got food tech? Um, today. Marvellous. Marvellous. Wonderful, marvellous food tech today. Fucking hooray. Luckily, it was relatively straightforward pizza dough food tech as opposed to some kind of three-course haute cuisine stuffed duck food, food tech, which occasionally Jamie likes to wind me up by pretending that he needs a goose for food tech. The last laugh will probably be not on me because he probably will end up needing to take a goose in for food tech one day. The weirdest thing, though, with food tech, and and I don't know whether it's changed since I was at school or whether it's a girl-boy thing, but Jamie is quite happy to get his food tech ingredients, put them in any old carrier bag and go to school. Now, I know it's not just me because I asked about this once on Twitter and everybody's like, oh my God, yes. When I was at school, you needed to have the right kind of carrier bag. That was, I remember spending probably hours trying to sort through the carrier bags and has to find the right kind of carrier bag or saving up to buy an item. This is is the classic, saving up to buy an item from a shop, an item that I didn't even fucking want, but the bag was cool and therefore I had to get the item to get the fucking carrier bag. Honestly, I do worry about what went through teenage me's head. But yeah, that was, that was Sunday night, wasn't it? It was like the Sunday night when I was at sort of, you know, in year seven, year eight, Sunday night, Sunday tea time, Antiques Roadshow theme tune and rumming around in the carrier bag pile yelling at your sibling because they'd taken the carry bag that you'd saved because you were going to put your food tech ingredients in that and god forbid you had the wrong kind of carry bag god forbid your mum went just take a sainsbury's bag it's like mum do you not understand what it's like to be a teenage girl at all god i was unreasonable but yeah so at least there's at least there's no shit going down with carry bags i hope that doesn't start i hope i haven't now jinxed myself there Jamie's also managed to, where are we now? Was it the fourth week of term? Yeah, he, he's managed managed four weeks before managing to get his first detention of the school year. Yes, that slow hand clap you can hear there is all mine. Jamie has a checkered history. He's, he's, a, he's a good boy. He's a lovely boy. School is a real inconvenience with, for him because it stops him from dicking about with his mates, which is all he really wants to do. He confessed to me that, in fact, last term, last year at school, in year seven, he had been the class record holder for the number of detentions. And he said this with this real look of pride on his face. I was like, yes, yeah, son, that's not, that's not competition. I'm massively keen on, on you winning. He had told me at the start of the school year this year that it was going to be very hard very hard for him to get detention because they were only doing after school detentions and those are really hard to get mum and, and and he look he said it to me in the same way that you know Beth might say to him, oh you know I really want to get picked for the team it's really hard to get picked for the team but I'm gonna really try Jamie had kind of the same fervor in his eyes as he told me oh, it's really hard really hard to get these after school detentions and then he came out of school one evening this week and said to me and, and I won't say I won't say he, he crowed about it because I think there was a shit is mum gonna tell me off for this but there was a I've got detention! And yeah, bravo son, bravo. Even though they're really hard to get, you've managed to get one. You are an achiever. You are an achiever. God love him. I said, why? Why have you got detention? Because my concern is always, are my children being unkind? Are they bullying anybody? Are they are they being dicks? Um, I, Jamie was probably being a bit of a dick, but no, he'd got detention just because he couldn't wait another five minutes to ask his mate the question that he felt that he needed to ask him about, no doubt, some YouTube sub or something to do with online personalities. He couldn't wait that additional five minutes he needed to ask there and then, which given that the teacher was at that point in time trying to get him to understand the rudiments of algebra, I can see why she was probably a little bit fucked off. So yeah, so uh, Jamie's had his first, first, first detention. Let's hope he's not on course for another record this year.
he also in the in the in the vein of 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 forgetting out things he he's really enjoyed winding me up this this year and and i i do fall for it every single time because i'm so paranoid about the fact i'm constantly forgetting stuff he um he likes to come in as we're leaving the house and i and i'm doing my teeth deodorant fog block a key mask hand sanitizer water bottle rant etc he likes to then go oh yeah mum i just remembered that i forgot to do this really massive assignment for maths which is basically worth 90 percent of all of my exam marks up to postgraduate level ha 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 yes you can imagine my face when i get that in the morning but the trouble is i say to him jamie yeah you can't really go with go with go with that vibe son because one day that will be the reality that will have happened because much like his mother he's he's not great on remembering stuff we had a we had an excellent <laughs> we had an excellent moment last night where I try and encourage the kids to get their homework done on a Friday night so it's it's done it's out of the way and Jamie was pretty good went upstairs to, to do his homework and typically with their maths homework they have one task and then they have an extension task to do as well and he said I've done my homework and I said cool have you done the extension task and he said no no I haven't done that and I said well it's maths Jamie it's really important go and do your extension task okay he said so he went upstairs and did he came back down a little bit later and I said to him have you done the extension task and he said yeah 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 no I've done it I've done it and I said okay and then I thought a little bit later I'm going to check in I said have you have you done the extension task Jamie and he looked really guilty and he went no 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 I, I haven't done it I said fine okay Saturday morning your sister will be at fo- football you can do your extension task then okay he said I'll do it so this morning, got up to take Beth to a football match, 9am, an hour's drive away in the pouring rain. Yes, that expression you are imagining on my face is spot on. Actually, it was a joy. They all played brilliantly. And I'm so happy that football is up and running again. Long may it last. Anyway, I digress. So I, I got up and wandered past Jamie's room. And I said to him, that extension task, he went, oh yeah, I've just had a look. There is no extension task. I was like, okay, so last night you lied to me about having done a piece of homework that actually doesn't exist. What is this absolute insanity? What is this world we live in? You can see why I'm confused. But COVID has definitely brought some benefits. I'm, I'm, I'm a very glass, glass half full person. I am always looking for, for the positives. And definitely my school run high of the, of, the, of the term so far was when Beth came out a couple of days in and announced to me, we don't have to do reading diaries anymore. Alle fucking Luya, no more reading diaries. Oh my God, it's the dream. It's the dream. I feel so much for any teacher or TA or indeed parent who goes in to listen to small children read. And we all know the hell of listening to small children read. And that in itself is probably a, a podcast all of its own. But I have just fucking abhorred filling in reading diaries because to me, reading is something that I do for for fun for total relaxation it's my me time it's my switch off time and I absolutely get why it's really important for teachers to to know that the children in their class are reading so don't get me wrong I understand all the reasons that reading diaries are really really important but oh fucking hell the chore of filling them in it was like my homework and I was so bad at it I was forever writing notes I, I felt like it was me I'm really sorry I've forgotten my homework uh, I, I I did listen to the reading and I, I absolutely did mean to fill in the reading diary but I just forgot I'm so shit I'm so sorry um yeah so I I am not sorry to to see that reading diaries are not something that can be permitted in a in a covid world and I suspect probably lots of teachers if they're honest may may well feel the same my 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 favorite reading diary story which I think I told on the blog at the time was Beth must have been in about year one I think and she was unlike her brother she read she learned to read very very quickly and my favorite evening was we were doing her reading and I was like Beth Beth stop it just concentrate just read properly and she was she sort of said to me I am reading properly and I was like oh you're really not but anyway she insisted on doing it read the story beautifully I'm sure it was a a biff and chip classic and so at the end of it I wrote in the in the reading diary and I've got I took a photo because I still remember what I had to write at the time and I wrote to her long-suffering teacher I wrote Beth read beautifully she did however insist on reading in a Russian accent and she did for one night only I have no idea why it was a very good Russian accent uh my children are bonkers so yeah so yeah farewell reading diaries that is that is not a that's not a sad farewell but yeah obviously mornings are a mad rush and the one saving grace for me is certainly at Beth school is the is the absolute joys of the unsung heroes who run before and after school clubs god love the before and after school staff you absolute bloody legends 
it is before and after school club is the greatest invention known to man on so many levels not least because i i am just disorganized and actually having quite a big window when i can drop my children in is is only only a positive thing and the before and after school club at, at beth school and obviously where jamie was previously we're very lucky it's on site and it it just became a proper proper home away from home for them and the two ladies who who ran it just became friends and became you know people that the, the kids would chat to about anything and even Jamie when he was in year six and he was probably a bit old for after school club really but it was convenient because he was there with his sister and just the rapport and the bond and one of my favorite photos from Jamie's last day of school is actually not not him with his teachers but him with the with the two ladies who ran before and after school club so if you are a somebody who works in a before or after school club, I, you, you ladies and you gentlemen, you are some of the greatest unsung heroes of our time. You save my sanity pretty much every day. Uh, you are you are wonderful, wonderful people, and thank you so so very much for everything everything that you do for our children. We're very grateful. My my children, in fact, have, have typically loved before and after school clubs so much that even now I turn up to get Beth, and Beth looks at me with a, "Why are you here?" I'm like. I'm your loving mother. I've come to get you so we can spend time together. Why well, like it here? Okay, but we could go home and we could like hang out together and do stuff. But I'm hanging out with my friends here and the, pe and the people who run, run the before and after school club and I, I want to stay with them. To the point that I've had days where with Beth I have to negotiate what would be an acceptable time to, to come and collect her from after school club. Because she doesn't want to miss out on all the fun. So there's there's feedback to, to how fun I am to, to hang around with. But yeah, God love you. If you work in a before or after school club or if you do wrap around care, thank you so, so much. You, you save my sanity. And my sanity is, is typically in, in short span scorer. I think it's the multitasking, isn't it? I think it's the trying to think about getting yourself up and dressed and ready and the children up and dressed and ready and then the million and one things that everybody needs to remember to have. And I, I know when I wrote my, my blog post the other day on, on Jamie forgetting his food tech stuff, and there are a couple of people, not many, but I, I tend to get this whenever one of my kids has forgotten something and I've kind of, you know, gone to make it right. And they were like, well, they'll never learn if you don't, you know, if you run around or like them after all that, if you remember stuff for them, they'll never learn. They'll never grow up into functioning human beings. And I just think bollocks. I, I, I don't think that is true. I mean, fair enough. You do you. But I think, do you know what? We're all fallible. Kids particularly are, are really fallible. There's a shitload going around in their head. I mean, admittedly with Jamie, it's probably, you know, does he need shoes for school today? And which famous celebrity YouTuber is he is he gonna grow up to be? But they've got lots going in their head, they're fallible, and I I you know, yes, they've got to learn to be independent. My kids have chores, they have stuff they have to do around the house, so I expect them to step up and take responsibility. But when they accidentally fuck up as well, I'm their mum, I kind of expect to be there for them and I think I th I think that's a good thing. So yeah, I I did think about writing a, a ranty blog post about about people who think that no children should stand on the, their own two feet. They absolutely should do, but they're just like us. They're gonna make mistakes, and actually letting them know it's okay to make mistakes and that we'll work out a way through them. I think that's a good thing. Anyway, that's my rant for today. But yeah, um, multitasking in the school run. My my favorite <laughs> one of my favorite multitasking moments on the school run was years ago when I was both the kids were at the same school and I was dropping them off in the morning and I really cannot park like I am really really bad at parking my car in fact I, earlier today I popped to the supermarket and I'd, I'd driven um forwards first into a space which I'm never very good at but I managed to get the car in and I, I came back and it was one of those awkward things where you know you've parked really badly but you're like well I'm not I'm not over the line and the other two cars can get out so it's all right anyway I, I arrived back just as the car on one side had gone and another car had driven into to the space that they'd left and the guy got out his car and and kind of looked at looked at my car as if to say really really would you really park at that angle yes yes sir yes i would that's the only angle i am capable of parking at but yeah my one of my favorite moments as someone who's not able to park even slightly i was attempting a a parallel park one morning which i actually managed and i felt like getting out of the car and standing on the roof and punching the air because I very rarely managed to parallel park. Admittedly, it, I was probably only able to parallel park because the space between the cars was roughly the length of a double-decker bus. That's about how much space I need to parallel park. But yes, that particular morning, I was, I was really concentrating on trying to, you know, get the car, angle it right, get it into the space. At which point, a much smaller Beth piped up, Mum, where do babies come from? So I parallel parked that car whilst explaining the miracle of life. Yeah, get me, get me. A proud parenting moment indeed. And one of the 
one of the things that that's just making the school run even more even more challenging than usual this term is I think I've said before quite rightly the schools are asking that if you don't have to get public transport in the morning if you if you have other means of transport then please don't use public transport so there's it's less crowded on the school buses uh to reduce transmission of covid all makes perfect sense of course i managed to pick ch- schools for my two children which are on totally opposite sides of the town of course i did that but that's fine that's fine we just leave the house earlier all goes smoothly almost never but that's that's the plan but it's it's fulfilled <laughs> it's fulfilled jamie's I wouldn't call it a prediction, but Jamie, starting in year seven last year, was was getting the bus to and from school until the point when the schools closed. And he was all right about it. But I I had some experiences on the school bus when I was his kind of age, which which weren't great. So I've always taken great pains to go, how, how was school and how was the bus? And he was like, yeah, it's all right. And I said, you know, is everything OK? He's like, yeah, yeah, no, it's fine. It's fine. So I kept asking a few days. I said, look, mum, mum, the bus is the bus is fine. My mates are on it. I've got people to chat to. It's 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 fine. It's quite crowded. It's a bit busy. He said, the thing is, mum, I just I just don't really think I'm a public transport kind of guy. I was like, well, at twelve years old, Jamie, I can tell you with some certainty, you fucking will be a public transport kind of guy for the foreseeable. Thanks for your opinion. But hey, who's had the last laugh? Clearly, it's him because now I'm chauffeuring him to school every morning. So I think he's, I think he's, a, I think he's a big fan of that. And I, you know, I, I feel hugely privileged, despite all my my moaning and complaining about the school. And I actually, it's a huge privilege to to be able to to do it. I do feel really lucky to do it. I know that not everybody can. And actually, in a crazy, mad world, it's sometimes some of our few kind of quiet and peaceful moments at the at the start or the end of the day. When I say quiet or peaceful moments, it's, it's mostly because my, my two children are completely, completely ignoring me. Jamie's my favourite. He, he gets in the back of the car like I'm literally driving a taxi. He gets in the back of the car with his mobile phone off school. I'll be like, how's your day? He's like, yeah, it was good. I'm like, anything happen? No is usually the answer. And then I'll I'll be sitting there in the front of the car, merrily chatting away to him about my day, and you know, sort of leaving, leaving him space to have a bit of a think. And occasionally I'll ask him ask him a question, and it will seem like he's been listening, he's been really concentrating. And I'll be like, "So, uh, did you get did you get any food in the canteen today?" He'll be like, "What? What?" Yeah, he's been basically he's got into the car, he's got on his mobile phone, and he started immediately messaging his his friends. So any kind of conversation train that I might want to have with with him is is clearly null and void. But that's fine. That is what mums are for. And as I say, all joking aside, it is a real privilege to be able to do it, despite the teeth, hair, shoes, deodorant, face mask, madness, which is which is the school run morning. And I thought I'd I thought I'd finish this this podcast today with. Probably my favourite school run memory of all time, which is, is a little bit gone down into to folklore with my with my work colleagues as well, for a reason that I'll tell you by. So it was, Beth was in year R, so it was, oh, I don't know, four or five years ago now, it was quite a while ago. And it was one of those mornings, it, I think it was like a Wednesday morning, and it was absolutely pouring with rain. Now, despite the fact I spend what feels like half my life on the side of a football pitch, I am not a great one for wet weather gear. I have, I love being outdoors, very rarely dressed appropriately. And on this particular rainy morning, I say rainy, it was, it was biblical in, in its, in its proportions. I was wearing skinny jeans, four inch stilettos and a cropped sleeve jumper. I had, I didn't think I had a coat for, for reasons unknown, I think possibly I left my coat school. And I think I convinced myself, I told you I was an optimist, I think I convinced myself that it couldn't keep raining this heavily, it would be one of those sudden storms, and then it'd stop, and the sun would come out from behind the clouds, and I'd walk the children into the playground, and all would be well. All was not well. So we parked outside the school gate, and I, and I kept on seeing, it, I mean, I, it should have been a clue, right? I kept on seeing all these, all these, all these parents walking past, and they were wearing cagoules and max raincoats with the with the hoods up. They had umbrellas. Most of them had boots of some kind on. And their children similarly were were wearing like school uniform coloured Wellington boots and coats buttoned up. And they had like nice nice Macintoshes and cagoules on them. My children had their had their coats and they had their school shoes and they didn't really have a lot else. And so we all kind of sat in the car and we looked at one another. And children looked at me and I looked at them. And I was like, right, we're going to have to make a run for it. We're going to have to make a run for it. And so we opened the car, we got out of the car, and we 
sped at some speed <laughs> towards the school playground. Jamie was having the time of his life. He was a bit older. It was raining so hard that the rain was bouncing back up from the puddles on the ground. And so Jamie was laughing his head off. Beth was very small. Beth was not happy with the situation at all. Beth ran into school with me, screaming, you're trying to drown me! You're trying to drown me! So yeah, that was, um, that was somewhat less than ideal. And so I deposited Beth with her long-suffering teacher. Beth still screaming, she's trying to drown me! I took Jamie around to the other side of the school and then ran through rain, which, as I say, was literally splashing up out of the puddles. Uh, I mean, I, I have never been so wet. And I include after having gone swimming. I was absolutely drenched. Got back to the car, opened the car, and I thought I'd better just have a little look in the mirror. And I, I cannot describe the reflection that met me. I mean, literally, I wear a lot of black eyeliner and I, at that moment, looked like somebody had repeatedly punched me in both of my eyes. I had eyeliner dripping down from my eyes into my mouth, onto my chin and down into my cleavage. I have never been so wet. And I had an early, early meeting that morning, so I didn't have time. I didn't have time to go back to the house. And I thought, well, I'll, I'll dry out. It's fine. But I was looking at my face going, God, I can't, I mean, I can't even drive like this. I just look, look at the state of me. And I thought, it's fine. You know, I'm, I, I'm a parent. I must have, like, round the car, there must be tissues or wipes or there was nothing. There was fucking nothing. I had nothing. And I was thinking, well, I've got, I haven't got a spare jumper. So on my, I can't wipe this eyeliner off on my jumper. What the fuck am I going to do before it all dries and cakes together? And then I thought to myself, no, no, you do have something. You do have something you can use to, to repair the ravages of your rain drenched face, <laughs> which is how amongst my work colleagues, that particular <laughs> school run has, has gone into folklore because I arrived eventually at work and went into the office and, and clearly I'd sorted out my face, but my, but my the hair and the rest of me was an absolute state. And they said, oh my goodness, what happened? I told them about the school run. And I said, but don't worry, because I did manage to clean the black eyeliner that had run right down my face off and repair myself to, to some kind of order. And they said, what did you use to do that? And I said, I used the only thing that I had on me in my handbag, which was two unwrapped tampons. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how I came to sit outside of my children's school first thing in the morning, cleaning my face with some tampons. God, I love being a parent. God, I love being a parent. With that, I will leave you to your weeks. Take care, look after yourselves. It's a busy week, Shazaz. It is birthday week because we have not one, not two, but three birthdays all in the space of around about 10 days. So it's going to be a busy week. I will be back next week to tell you all about it. Not least, the birthday cake that Beth has requested I make for her. Oh, it is a classic. Have a good week. Look after yourselves. Stay safe and take care. Lots of love. Bye-bye.